God, their care and their protection over us. We want to thank thee for Jesus Christ, who is the power of God and the wisdom of God. We thank thee for waking us up this morning. We thank thee for the Holy Spirit. We thank thee for the Sabbath day rest from physical to spiritual. Wherever we can come into his courts to worship him in spirit and in truth. We want to thank thee for every brother and every sister who are here. That they continue to bless each one of us in the video and also so collectively. We also pray for those who are on the way that you bring them safely. Yes. And tune our voices that we may say praises to thy name, honor, and glory. Yes. This is my humble prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 312. 3, 1, 2. Jesus keeps me near the cross. We would like everyone to be singing lustily, please.
Oh, God, I'm king.
then I'll first start that song. 442 and 669. How sweet are the tidings that greet the pilgrim in.
on 468 Far from all the care behavior Sabbath morning.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Brethren, don't be afraid to cry out unto God. He's our burden bearer. He's our only hope and our only plea. Let, call, let us call upon him. Knowing quite well he hear and answer prayer. Loving Father, this morning, this morning, blessed Jesus, you say a broken and a country heart you will never despise. This morning, we come before thee in need of help, for we know that you are our every helper. This morning, we come weak but we know that you are strong. This morning, we have nothing to bring. We know you are the all-giver. But with you, Lord, we can do all things. Through thy grace and thy mercy, we have that opportunity, Lord, to be somebody, to be something in this world. To be gems for thy heavenly Canaan. This morning, as we cry out to thee, you know even our darkest thoughts. You know our every desire. You know our ending. You know our beginning. You know the number of hair on our hair. You know the number of grain of sand in the seas throughout this world. You are the all knowing and the all powerful God. We call upon you who have created the heaven, the earth, and all that daring is. We magnify thy name this morning. We glorify thy name. For we know that there is no other name under the heaven whereby we can be saved. We ask of thee this morning to have thine own way. Beat back the forces of darkness beat back the forces of darkness let thy will be done in our lives let us understand and appreciate that the devil came not but to kill to steal and to destroy but you came that we might have life and have it more abundantly let not the devil steal our joy for the joy of the Lord is my strength. And daily we seek that joy. We seek that strength. We seek that inner determination. Though we may be beaten by many a foe, we must stand like the brave. Stand knowing who our Savior is. Knowing the God we serve. Knowing that you Lord, you have never been defeated. You can never be defeated. But you in us, Lord, will defeat the devil every single day. I say hallelujah. 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 Praise be to God. On thee, we put all our trust. In thee, we put all our confidence. We make the bold statement as is written in thy word. Yeah. Do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I shall fear no evil. For thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. Anoint us this morning, Lord. Anoint us with that oil of gladness. Anoint us, Lord, with that oil of healing. Anoint us, Lord, with that Holy Spirit, Blessed Jesus, that we will read and understand. That we read and retain. That we will read and your wisdom will be in us. Take charge this morning. Anoint us from the crown of our heads 
to the soles of our feet. Continue to fill our bread basket and our water pitcher. Continue to be our every supply. Let nothing, let nothing and no one separate us from thy love. We place our issue at your feet. You know the issues. You are the solver of all the issues. We commit them to thee. We beg of thee that you give us the patience, the faith, and the enduring spirit to wait on thee and to be of good courage. Give us the discerning eyes to see the devil from afar. Let us, Lord, understand that with every temptation, there is a way of escape. Show us the way of escape. Show us the way of escape. That all we do and all we say will be a worthy testimony of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Today we commit this service unto thee. It is also a day of communion. There are many who are absent from our ranks this morning for one reason or the other. Those that are sick, touch and heal. Those that are doing thy missionary work, be with them. Give them that boldness. Those who just feel like, I pray God, that you bring back the word to their remembrance. If you have loved one for another, then you must have fellowship one with another. And as you rightly declared in another place, we must not be forsaking ourselves from the assembly of the Lord. So take charge this morning. Feed us more than ever. Feed us this morning, Lord. Remember the age among us. Remember those who are going through their bitter trials and tribulation. Increase them. Increase them in that faith. Knowing quite well, it is you that is bearing it in us. Of ourselves, we can bear nothing. How we thank you, Lord. We thank you for safety and traveling mercies. We thank you for all that you have brought on this spot of our ground. Any more who are on their way, do bring them safely. We lift gatherings this morning in your name. We lift the elderships. We lift the membership. May self be slain. And may you be glorified. Look on those who have to play a part in thy service this morning. We pray that as they open their mouths, you will fill it with good things. And that the words that truly come out will be a blessing unto each and every one of us. Even unto those who may stand before us today. We want to thank you again. We want to thank you again for thy wondrous blessings. For answered prayer. For this ministry. For this spot of a ground. For all those that you have brought here. All those who have, you have passed through on this spot of a ground. For our brothers and sisters near and far. We thank you for those who are, 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 that you have loaned unto us. We ask of the Lord that you draw them closer and closer unto thee. Those who are outside the paling of grace. Whether it is our spouses or our children. Speak to their hearts even at this time. Let thy Holy Spirit continue to woo them unto us. Woo them back unto thee. Help them Lord to know that you and you alone are the Savior. You and you alone are the Redeemer. You and you alone are God. So to, to into your hands we commit them. And we commit every situation pertaining to them. Again we say thank you. Again we say thank you. Again we say thank you. In Jesus almighty name. Amen. And amen. And in the words of our mouth. And the meditations of our heart. Be acceptable and nice. Oh Lord. Our strength and our redeem. Amen. And amen. Praise the Lord.
Praise the Lord. You know, I thank God for a holy and a wonderful Sabbath day like today. You know, that it reminds me of what Jesus told the congregation. He said that many desire to see what they were seeing at that point in time. So, this morning, my heart's desire is for us to recognize the great opportunity God has given us that we can congregate today where the government isn't searching to lock us up, where a bomb isn't looking to fall upon us at any moment because we know these things are happening all around the world. You know, I was watching a documentary that was talking about Islam and they were saying that plenty of the, of the Muslims were converting to, is, to, to Christianity and they have to hide and they show you a large group of them hiding in a room praying and reading the Bible because they know that in those countries if you are found you could lose your life so as the opportunity is given to us today let us especially today is communion service let us not let the day go to waste but Jesus said that whilst he is near to us whilst probation hasn't closed for us and it is still open if our sins are as red as scarlet Jesus said he can make it white as snow but we have to believe we have to ask we have to seek only by seeking the Bible said can it be found only by asking the scripture said can we receive only by knocking the scripture said can the door be open unto us so if we do not ask if we do not seek if we do not knock then we come like the the Laodiceans and the churches of old that say I am of need of nothing is anybody here of need of nothing then we are in the wrong place because this is a place of those who have needs you know God used me to say it sometime a past and somebody told me that they were blessed by that statement it was a statement that I made that God put in my heart that if you go in a hospital if you are sitting down in a hospital you go to see the doctor for one reason or the other and you're in the waiting room and someone comes in groaning on one side making noise disturbing the peace and next person throwing up on the ground based on where you are would you be surprised by those actions that somebody's throwing up somebody making noise somebody fall on the ground and all manner of things happening you would expect that because they expect that in a hospital not so so why don't we have patience when, with each other why don't we be long suffering with each other when this is the place jesus said where we come for healing why do we lose patience with each other when someone does something and are surprised when this is the place for us to heal? We have to help each other, just like any hospital, you expect that. So Jesus said, the whole, they that are whole, they that are well, need not a physician. But the sick need a physician. The wretched and the outcast need a physician. Those who are battling with issues, they need a physician. So we ought to be patient. That's why Jesus said, the strong must do what? Bear the infirmity of the weak. So if you are strong, you are not to be impatient with the weak, but help the weak. Say, sister, I realize that you are overtaken in a fault in this situation. This is how I overcame the same situation. Because I was in the same situation because the Bible said that nothing takes us unawares we have not gone through anything that is not common to all men. Brother Anthony is strong because he overcame through faith, through the same situation that Brother Kyle is now coming up to face. And like Bishop said, when, he, when he's young, he liked to lie with older folks. So even in these few words, I want to welcome each and every one of us and remind us that we are in the right place. Satan dangles and flashes outside there, things of, in the world. But we here are happy in the Lord. This is true happiness. Because this happiness does not bring remorse. Happiness in Christ does not bring regret. 
When you wake up in the morning, you're regretting your actions of the days gone by. Not so? When you're in Christ, there's no regret. There's peace of mind. You know, I walked down from school yesterday, and you seen all the paint on the ground from when the world have so-called a good time. All the paint still on the wall and on storefronts and people, private places. And, you know, I wonder how much people have regrets now. How much people go to the doctor now and get news that change the rest of their life because of one or two days of what they call freedom and happiness for a lifetime of regret. So let us not feel bad that we are losing out of the things of this world. Jesus rightly said, love not the things of this world. Why? Because it have not even entered into the hearts of men. Neither have I seen, even in vision, of the great things God has in store for us. We are to keep our eyes on the prize of what is to come. Treasures untold. Eternal life alone is worth any sacrifice that we can give on this earth. Because a man's lifetime is but a drop in the bucket. Not so? A man, how long a man lived for today? 70 years, 80 years. That's a drop in the bucket. And even in that 70 and 80 years, he do not have the same strength as a 20-year-old. So even as the years go on by and the years passes, he cannot do the things he wants to do. So if he sow after the flesh, the Bible said, we will reap the things of the flesh, which is disappointment, regrets, and sorrows. But as we come here, we are sowing towards our soul salvation, and our treasures are being stored in heaven. So let us give all Christ our all today as we welcome those who are here for the first time. Can you stand, those who are here for the first time? Let us give you a warm welcome. I does say the word ministry welcome. My brother is here for the first time. Can we have the pleasure of knowing your name? Brother Devon, rich man. Welcome to Does Say the Word Ministry. And the sister there, she's here for the first time? Oh, she was here already? Okay, okay. Can you reacquaint yourself with us? Because I can't remember seeing the face. <laughs> sister Teresa. And, and the young one in the middle there. You know, we welcome you all in the holy and matchless name of Jesus Christ. There is no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved except through the name of Jesus Christ. The young ones in our midst, I welcome you again. The faithful servants of the Lord, I welcome you again. The saints of God, I welcome you again. Let us have a grand time. Let us have a spirit-filled time. Let us know that we are in the right place. Let us give God our all and in all, let us trust in him, for he alone is our burden bearer, and all is well in Jesus' hands. Amen? Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. At this time, we invite Elabal for to bring the Sabbath school service for us this morning. Short end.
Okay, good morning, our brothers and sisters. Um, <clears throat> remember, we had almost completed the study of the first chapter, the first chapter in the book, Lightning the Earth with His Glory. And um, we have on page 13 a new cycle. But let us, let us recant to see how well we have understand what we were thought and if we uh, well you have the book now the booklet in your hand so you will i guess you will remember what um, could could someone say that could someone in the audience um say um tell me or tell us when did the cycle the first cycle started Could someone, the first cycle, when did it start? 1844 is correct. We start in 1844 and ended where? And ended where? The first cycle. No. 2004. Complete a cycle. How much years is our generation 40 years and how much cycles how much generation in a cycle four generation okay we are learning quite well as, as far as i'm seeing that's very good so we have um so that um we now start in 2004 we start a new generation a new cycle sorry a new cycle so where we are in the new cycle, how many, year, how many years has gone to uh, a watch? How many watch start um, complete in the first cycle of the, new, of the new cycle? How many watch? How many watch? One watch. And a watch is how many years? Ten years. So how many watches? In a generation four watches okay we are doing quite quite well we are doing quite well that is very good so that um, we can now enter into the new cycle on page 13 a new cycle okay now four generation since October 22nd 1844 ended in 2000 ended in October 20 22nd 2004 that was a complete cycle therefore a new cycle starts on october 23rd 2004 and we are now in the first watch of the first generation of this new cycle so the first watch now the first watch have ended where when 2014 how many years are we in the second watch? How many years? Four years. So we are following quite nicely. We are four years in the second watch. The second watch is called what? The second watch is called what? The midnight watch. Remember that. The second watch is called the midnight watch. Now, it is very crucial to know that the second watch is called the midnight watch. What experience, what experience we have in the midnight watch? Behold the what? The bridegroom cometh going out to? What text is that in the scripture? Matthew what? Matthew 25. Correct. So we are learning quite well. I must say that we are learning quite well. And uh, praise God. You know, praise God, you're learning, learning quite well. Okay. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go you out to meet you. So this means that in the second watch, the bridegroom what? The bridegroom came. So if we are in the second watch, it's a crucial watch. And we have to understand now where we are in time in that watch. Remember to remember that 
the earth would not pass the 6,000 years. The earth would not pass the 6,000 years. The, the, the millennium will start on the 7,000 years. So we are closing, in other words, we are closing the cycle of the 6,000 years. This is a crucial watch. Very, very crucial. So it behoves us right at this time, not only to be getting ready, but to be what? To be ready. I want us to emphasize on that, to be ready. Because I, as I have said already, if most, a lot of us, or most of us travel. Isn't that so? When the day come for, to travel on that day from here to another country, could you be getting ready? What you have to do before? No, you, you lose the flight, which means that you cannot fly. So we have to be ready before. Isn't that so? So, before Christ comes, we are to be ready, not getting ready. And what will surprise us if we are not ready is the mark of the beast crisis. It's a crisis that no pen will be able to prescribe. That crisis. The mark of the beast crisis is very crucial to each and every one of us here. In fact, to the world. That the servant of the Lord says, no pen will be able to subscribe the scenes of the last days. So that we must be ready. I emphasize it over and over. We must be ready now. No time to be playing church. No time to be playing church. If we are still playing church, then therefore, we are in the wrong place. We are in the wrong place. We must be ready now. We turn over on page 14. It says here, the first generation of the new cycle, October 4, 2004 to October, October 2044. The first generation of the new cycle, in other words, uh, another 40 years, right? End up in October 2044. Now, do you think that we will, we will see October 2044? That will cross the cycle of the, uh, of the 6,000 years. It will cross the cycle of the 6,000 years. And the 6,000 years would not cross because we must enter the millennium on the 7,000 years. Okay? So, uh, the first watch of this new cycle, new, this new generation, October 2004 to 2014, that is when this, the, the book was written. 2000, the camp book was 2014. And I believe that um, in this um, this this um, the camp in Barbados, I believe the doc will pick up from there. I just believe so he'll pick up from the 2014 and carry the church, you know, carry the church over. I believe so. So I believe that those of us probably who are planning to go, I believe that is the area you are to look for. I'm just saying, eh? I, I'm sure what he has in mind, what he, but I believe he'll, he'll take the church and carry it over to 2014 and over to 2018 to onward. Oh, okay. Last year of this watch, October 2013 to 2014, that was the camp year, 2013 to 14. The next second watch in this first generation of this new cycle will be October 2014 to 2024. Now, that is the second watch. That is the crucial watch. That is the watch of the midnight cry. Now, remember, it is said, in that watch, behold the bridegroom cometh. 
So you see where we are in time. We are almost reaching the border of the 6,000 years. We are just in the border 2024 in the border of the 6,000 years. So Christ, that means that Christ is right there. It's a serious thing, you know, brethren. It's a serious thing to be living in this time. Eh? Very, very serious. Crucial. We must have all our sins blotted out. All. Not one sin will enter into heaven. If we have one sin, cannot enter. So now, Christ is where? In the second apartment doing what? The blotting out of sin. The atonement. The atonement, when you break it up, is at one mint. We're supposed to be at one mint with God. This is the time in which we're living. This is the time when, when the high priest went to enter the, the, the most holy place of the heavenly sanctuary to do the cleansing work of the, of the people and the sanctuary. So therefore, it calls on behalf of us a complete reconciliation to God. A total surrender. That's why it is important now, those of us who are consecrated to the work of God to enter therein. Now these are the books, this is uh, what um, were printed by, you know, to give out to the people. Now, in, the, in that book, in um, which um, um, brother or uh, uh, bishop has, the third, the third chapter, which is a very important chapter, this first and second Adam. Very, very informative. And as we print out these books, we'll be able to give it some to the church of the Bread Wing to further their studies in this area in which we are living. So this is the work that is going on outside here. And sister, yeah, you have one of the book, the, the, the third chapter, the second, and the first and second Adam. So it says here, continue. Last year of this watch, 2013 to 2014, and now the, the next or second watch in this first generation of this new cycle will be October 2014, 2024. Again, the crucial time. The second watch is also called the what? The Midnight Watch. The Midnight Watch is where, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. That is the Midnight Watch. And this is the watch we are entering in. We are entering into the Midnight Watch. We are four years in the second watch. And we are four years in the midnight watch. My brothers and sisters, Christ could come in this watch. I'm not saying he will come. I'm saying he could come in this midnight watch. This brings us to mind, Matthew 25, 1 to 3, the parable of the ten virgin. Notice verse 6 in that. It says what it says. And at midnight there was what? A cry made. Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go ye out to meet him. So you see, the midnight watch is the most crucial watch. And we are in the midnight watch four years. Four years. So where are we standing? We are standing on holy ground. This is where we are standing. On holy ground. We cannot, um, we cannot afford to make any skylark with our life. No. We dare not. We should not. 
but we should humble with prayer and supplication. Seek for true repentance of our soul, body, and spirit. Because we are in the midnight watch. And we go now, preparation for the latter rain and the loud cry. Preparation for the what? The latter rain and the loud cry. Who knows? What do we know about the latter rain? I want somebody to answer in the, in the audience. Do we know anything about the latter rain? Let me hear. Let me hear somebody tell me something about the latter rain. I ain't here. Huh? A time of the. A time of refreshing. That is one part. But I want to hear something. Something else. I'm looking for something else. The outpouring of the Holy Spirit. In what measure? In the full measure. The early rain. What do you know about the early rain? Church, what do we know about the early rain? Yeah? The day of Pentecost, what happened? The Holy Spirit came upon the disciples as a mighty wind. But we are told... The latter rain would be what? A double portion, more glorious and more power. But if we don't understand, and if we don't understand the latter, the early rain, we will never receive the latter rain. The early rain must bring us to complete victory. All sin must be forgiven. And everything must be complete in our life under the early rain. So that we can receive the latter rain. And it is said, the, the latter rain would be pouring out upon all grass that is in the field. It will pour out upon all grass that is in the field. So the early rain is to bring us to victory. The latter rain is to empower us to give the loud cry message. Yeah. Revelation 18.1. So the third angel message we have to preach. The church have to preach the third angel message. What is the third angel message, church? What is the third angel message? If we are not, we can't preach it, you know. Read Revelation 14. Get, get out your Bible, please. No, not six. Not six. Get out your Bible and read Revelation 14 from verse 9. And we will see what is the third angel message. What it says, reader, read somebody. message we got to proclaim if we doesn't know it we better learn it and have it in our hearts in our mind so that the spirit will be able to impress us first to convince us of sin and of righteousness and of judgment so that we can give it to the world okay 
the first and second angel, the first angel message by Luther. But we are to preach the what? The third angel message to bring down the power of Babylon. Babylon has been working power in the earth, deceiving people. But the people of God must break the power of Babylon and set her open to the world. There are many people, Christians, who are still there and they must be called out by God's people under the power of the latter rain under Revelation 18, 1 to 4. The earth was lightened with his glory. Read Revelation 18 for me, um, church, or somebody who get it, and we'll see exactly the power that comes with that third angel message. with power. Isn't that so? And the earth was what? Lightened with its glory. The earth must be lightened with the glory by you and I. Knowing, giving ourselves to God. Our life has been consecrated to God. And God will use us mightily to destroy the power of Babylon. That is the message that we got to preach to the world. And we are living in the time of that message. You understand? It is a time. We have much to learn, but we must learn it fast. You know, we must learn it fast. So that when God has a people, when God has a people, the end will come. And soon God is making up a people who will proclaim the message with power. May we all who are here be a part and parcel of that message. Preparation for the, the latter rain and the Lord cry. We are told that the 1888 mess, righteousness, the 1888 righteousness by faith message was the beginning of the Lord cried of the third angel. You see? Since then, since then, the message came, but it was not accepted. And the Holy Spirit is still here. It has not gone. It is still here waiting upon the people to prepare for the final battle against Christ and Satan. The head has already won the battle. The church now is waiting. God is waiting to fit the church under the head to proclaim the last message to a dying world. And we are the body of Christ. Remember that? We are the body of Christ. We must be able to fit under the head but if he does not know who is the head and the behavior of the head, we could never fit ourselves under the head. 
the behavior of the head of, of the body must be the behavior of the head. I say this again. The behavior of the body must be the behavior of the head. You cannot have a, a disobedient people to fit under that head. No way. So all our behavior, whatever it is, I does not know. You alone know. What is your behavior? What is your relationship with God? I know what is my relationship with God. You have to know what is your relationship with God. And if you does not know, it's best you get to know. It says the time of the test is just upon us. For the loud cry of the third angel has already begun in the revelation of the righteousness of Christ. The sin pardoning redeemer. This is the beginning of the light of the angel whose glory shall fill the whole earth. You know, the righteousness of Christ. So, in Christ, that, that means that, therefore, Christ must impute his righteousness in us. When his righteousness are imputed in us, we can now fit under the head. Because why? The head is the same righteousness of Christ. And the righteousness of Christ would not give us any misbehavior in our body. Place here. And we go from here. What is our demeanor in life? That is, in, that is very important. Because all of us seems to be very, you know, um, sanctif sanctimonious. Isn't that so? Sanctify and whatnot. But when we leave this place, are we the same? This is a question. When we leave the presence of God, we must be always on holy ground. If we have that thought, we will adjust, make an adjustment fast. You go outside there, you're on holy ground. You're at home, you're on holy ground. You're working, you're on holy ground. All where you go, remember that you should be on holy ground. You know why?